Hey, welcome to Be With The Word, and I'm Dr. Jerry Crete, and this is Pentecost Sunday. And I'm also doing a series on um, personality and what it means to be ourselves. And I'll be looking at a few different popular personality indicators from Myers-Briggs to uh, the Greek temperaments and even the brief mention of the Enneagram. So if you're interested in these topics, keep following me in this mini series that I called From Ascension to Assumption. And why I kind of picked personality and, and those two kind of bookends is that I believe clearly, uh, well, with the transfiguration, but with the assumption, uh, sorry, ascension, Jesus kind of reveals his divinity once again, and if it wasn't already clear by that point. And then the assumption, uh, we kind of see um, Our Lady uh, being taken to heaven, and that is her, the fullness of her identity is also revealed. Uh, obviously, she's human, um, but she has, um, like us, has been created in his image. And in her, we get the, the best example of, uh, of living that out. And so we want to be able to live out the best example or the best self that we can be. Um, so I thought it would be fun to look at um, these aspects of personality, connect them to uh, the Sunday readings. Uh, in particular, 1 Corinthians, we hear, um, we hear uh, St. Paul talking about different gifts and different service all from the same Lord, from the same God, and that they're individual manifestations of the Spirit. So um, I think that's kind of interesting. I think that a lot of times people are looking to different kinds of personality tests to have a greater understanding of who they are. And I think that's fine. I think it's okay to do that. Uh, I think it's just important to remember that they're kind of one axis, or they're one layer, or they're just one component, one way of looking at who we are. Uh, today I thought I would jump in and mention uh, in the Myers-Briggs or Kiersey temperament sorter or that, that whole arena, judging versus perceiving. Uh, that gets shortened down to J's versus P's. If you're familiar with Myers-Briggs, you would know that there are four, um, there are four letters. Right, so I happen to be an INFJ, and so you're either one of two letters in each of those categories. So last week we talked about being an introvert. So I'm an I. I'm an introvert. I could, my other option would be to be an extrovert. So I'm either an I or an E. And the other end of this the spectrum, uh, the last letter out of the four, is either a J or a P. So you're either a judger or a perceiver. <laughs> and those terms don't fully explain it all. I don't like being called a judger. I'd rather be a perceiver from the sounds of the words. But it really is a problem in translation and to understand what those mean. So the way that I understand judging versus perceiving is that the judging type prefers order, prefers finishing tasks, likes to have things completed. Right. Um, whereas the P, the perceiver, actually likes to think outside of the box and sometimes actually gets uncomfortable when uh, t tasks are almost finished. They like the possibilities more than they like the completion. Um, whereas J's really prefer order and finishing a list, finishing a task list. And they get a lot of satisfaction out of completion. Okay. Uh, I love the whole J versus P thing, especially when working with couples. Because sometimes uh, this is the more obvious problem when one person in a marriage or in a relationship is a J and the other is a P. And so if you're a J, you will relate to some of these things. Js really enjoy... Uh, order. So in the kitchen, for example, I have a place for everything in the fridge. There's a place where the condiments go, the fruit, the vegetables, uh, where things go. It may not be um, the same as other J's, but it's my order that I am used to. You know, there's a place for everything in the dishwasher. There's sort of an order to it. And it works in 
within me, I have a preference for that order. And I see order in things. Uh, even in my closet, <laughs> I would have a place for, you know, uh, different types of clothing or different seasons of clothing. And it's all organized in a very specific way. Um, hopefully without giving too much away, my wife, for example, is a P. So her side of the closet, you know, might sometimes look like Katrina hit it. I might not be able to see the order in her system, if you want to call it a system. But that's how a J sees it, right? And a P might look at the world in a different way. And they will see things and see a different kind of order than uh, a J. Or order is not a priority in the same way. And so for a J, that can be really frustrating. And so you see arguments with couples happen over little things around order. You could get two J's that just disagree on the way order should happen, or you get a J and a P where the J is really frustrated by the P because they're not ordering things. And the P is frustrated with the J because the J is uptight about ordering things, right? And the cool thing about Myers-Briggs <laughs> and, uh, and that whole system is that it promotes the idea that there is no right answer. That there's a value in the J's order, but there's also a value in the P being an out-of-the-box thinker, right? There is a value in the P's spontaneity. And there is a value in the J uh, being detail-oriented. So this really does still correspond with what St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians this week. And by the way, there are actual multiple possible readings. So you may or may not hear Corinthians. You may get Galatians, and that's fine. But if you're listening to Corinthians, it talks about one body with many parts. It talks about one spirit baptized into one body in Christ. And so we really do need to appreciate the complementarity of all the personality types. It's funny, I had an ongoing, I don't know if you'd call it a debate or disagreement or what you would call it, but with some other Catholic therapists that I've known in the past who were big fans of the Greek temperaments. That's a different personality type uh, organizer. And I personally, having had more experience with Myers-Briggs, really didn't love the Greek temperaments. I didn't really understand where it fit in, even from a scientific point of view. Uh, it felt like it was pulling from something ancient and maybe even pagan or whatever that didn't, didn't um, have any validity. Uh, and even the names, um, you have phlegmatic, which really comes from the phlegm, mucus. You have sanguine, blood. You have melancholic. You have choleric, disease. You have these, these four temperaments that sound horrible as far as the names go. And the idea of assigning people names that, that involve these horrible diseases or body fluids just seemed problematic to me. Um, so I had a lot of resistance to that type for a while. And that what even drove me nuts is that then people would look at me and say, well, Jerry, that's because you're a melancholic, that you're so like uptight or you're so like uh, stewing over this. The, the problems of the system. And so that almost frustrated me all the more. But when I calmed down and I looked at it, I realized that was probably true. And again, like Myers-Briggs, which sort of hits certain axes, it sort of describes different kinds of personality aspects, the temperaments do get to certain other personality aspects. So it has some value. And I was able to see in time that um, the diff those different uh, types also provide uh, insight into the human person. What I liked was the idea that the worst extremes of the Greek temperaments um, were not really the ideal. So if you're a choleric, so if you're prone to being reactive, possibly even angry or just sort of aggressive, that that's not actually where you should stay, that you should actually move more toward the center, right? And if you are phlegmatic, so you're very easygoing, 
but you might be difficult to take action, you really shouldn't stay there. So that really helped me understand that each of those Greek types need, uh, as they grow in holiness, to kind of move toward the center. And so the project becomes how do you um, grow in holiness so that you're not living out the worst extremes of your temperament type. This is really different from Myers-Briggs where you're kind of recognizing that it's based on preferences and that a preference isn't good or bad, right? So as an introvert, I might prefer um, a few friends over a lot of friends. I'm not trying to change that. It's really about accepting that. I'm accepting more and more who I am and just living with the fact, like if I'm a J and my wife's a P, I'm accepting who I am, she's accepting who she is. But here's the key, and I think this ties in with Galatians, which you may or may not hear on Sunday, and it's the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And the fruits of the Holy Spirit in Galatian are love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are beautiful, beautiful virtues, all of them. And I would say that as a Catholic approaching personality types, we need to bring, cultivate those fruits of the Spirit and bring them to our personalities. So whether we're a sanguine or a choleric or whether we're an NF or we're an NT or we're a P or a J, whatever it is, we are, or we're a nine or we're a three on the Enneagram, whatever it is, we want to, we want to practice gentleness. We want to practice self-control. We want to practice patience. All right. So if my wife might need to practice patience with me and or not, maybe it's patience so much as maybe self-control or generosity in terms of accepting the order and the ways in which I prefer order. But I also have to practice patience and generosity with her and self-control at times in terms of appreciating and stretching myself to appreciate how what she brings even though different is important and then sometimes I might need to um, uh, allow myself to be moved by her maybe her spontaneity um, will bring riches to me maybe my order brings benefits to her. So when we practice, when we are open to the fruits of the Spirit into our lives, it enriches our personality type, but it also helps us to relate better to our partner, to our spouse. And so um, we start to appreciate each other for our differences rather than allowing our differences to become obstacles. Okay. All right. So that's all I have for you today. I just, I mean, I could, we could talk more about the spirit. This is Pentecost. It's about being open to the Holy Spirit, about the advocate and the spirit of truth and those aspects. And, and the fact that uh, as a father sent, sent um, Christ into the world, so Christ sends us into the world. And on that note, I would say, be that person that God created into the world. Um, and, and I could go on, but I think that's enough. And I think that it's important for us to sit with the idea that my preferences or my temperament um, is good. It's not a good or bad. It's just a, it's a or neutral. I mean, it is a neutral in a sense, but it's a good in that it is just who I am. And, um, but at the same time, I need to practice those virtues. All right. I hope you have a great week. I hope you will join me uh, with Catholic Journeyman when that comes. Uh, I'm going to talk more about the strengths, I think, next week. And if you're interested in, in having your strengths assessment done, I've already had a few people reach out to me. I have two amazing life coaches that do strengths assessments. Um, so, I, you know, if you're interested in that, uh, reach out. And I hope you'll also go to soulsandhearts.com. I hope you like and subscribe to our different podcasts. 
I hope you'll listen over to uh, Dr. Peter's podcast. He's got some amazing topics going on with Catholic marriage and sexuality. He's uh, just doing fantastic work there. And uh, we're opening up the uh, Resilient Catholic Community in June. And we've got Catholic Journeyman coming at the end of June, early July. All right, guys. I hope you uh, take good care. Until next time, be still. Be still.